Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today we are going to be sewing up the Strawberry Kisses Rumper. Super cute, super simple, perfect, perfect, perfect for little ones. Um, it's so adorable, and I can't wait to get started. Um, before I do though, let me remind you about our fun fan giveaway, a $50 Alien Mag gift certificate. And all you have to do is subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our channel and comment below and um, just comment whatever you want to comment if you have any questions tell us your favorite pattern your favorite color um, what you're doing at the moment and that will get you entered uh, for our giveaway every month we give away $50 so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't and comment below so now we're gonna go ahead and get started I am making, once again, the Strawberry uh, Kisses Rumper, um, and I have already cut out my pattern pieces, so we're going to get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab both our liner and outer, and so we're going to do this to our liner and our body, uh, and our uh, liner and our outer. So I'm grabbing my back piece, this is my back piece, and this is going to be my outer, isn't it so cute? Um, and then I'm going to grab my front pieces, and I'm going to place them right on top. We're matching those where those arms are and we're matching right now. What we're matching is the shoulder seams. That's what we want to match those shoulder seams right sides together. And we're going to sew those shoulders together. And we're going to do, like I said, for the outer and for the liner. Here's my liner piece. I already sewed those shoulders together for my liner. So we're going to go ahead and do it for the outer. Let me sew those shoulders real quick. So um, this is, where are my scissors? This is um, a woven pattern. So you can use just your sewing machine on it with a zigzag stitch or whatnot. A lot of times with wovens, because of the stretch, because you're gonna be, kind of be hard on them, you sometimes want a bigger seam allowance than your serger gives you. So if you wanna go back and sew a straight stitch closer to the edge uh, inside and then finish the raw edges, that is up to you. Now, because for me, the reason why I don't do that sometimes when I do children's clothing is because I feel like they're not going to wear it forever and I feel like it's strong enough with my serger um, but if you want to be very like um, just have a very good good seam you want to do uh, maybe a straight stitch with your sewing machine first and then search the edges so you have a bigger uh, uh, seam allowance for your for your wovens okay so I have my um, shoulder seams are sewn together now don't go crazy with the seam allowance but i'm just saying if you wanted to like just reinforce that seam right there if you want to do a straight stitch right there i'm gonna grab my liner and i'm gonna open it up and right here at the front because we're going to be putting buttons or snaps on this uh you want to reinforce that fabric a little bit so we're going to use some uh interfacing and i cut it a little bit long so i'm gonna trim it right here at the end this is uh interfacing this is uh that uh fusible interfacing i couldn't think of the word fusible ah it doesn't want to stay down so it's fusible interfacing if i can get it cut right okay and i'm just attaching it to the wrong side of my liner and what this is doing is reinforcing uh, the where I'm gonna attach our button and where I'm gonna do our button holes or if you're going to do uh, snaps where you're gonna attach your snaps you want to have reinforcement there because if you don't sometimes especially with snaps if they go to snap them off and and uh, they pull them too hard the woven my rip and my rip that snap off so you want to make sure that you have a little bit of interfacing there Okay, so now if you're doing a embellished little piece, they in the pattern you get, and I had it around here somewhere, but I guess I lost it. I was gonna show it to you. There is a little pattern piece. Oh my word, how did I lose it? It was right here. All right, well, there's a little strip on your pattern piece. Oh, here it is. 
and it's a placket embellishment cutting guide so it shows you how long and how wide uh, basically how to cut your embellishment so I cut my embellishment and I'm using a little bit of lace and we're gonna grab our bodice and we're going to face it in front of you okay so here it is and on your right side where's my right side this is my left this is my right right here we're gonna go ahead and place our embellishment right side down right at the raw edge and we're going to baste it on so I'm gonna go ahead and go on basting is I'm gonna do it on my uh, sewing machine I'm gonna do a straight stitch that way it stays put when I go to sew it together my liner my outer that is will be sandwiched between both of them I'm gonna go ahead and sew it a basting stitch on this all right so it's basted on again I used just a long straight stitch on my sewing machine just to baste it on I'm gonna open up my bodice liner and outer and I'm going to put it right side up and I'm going to put my liner right side down, right on top of it. And we're going to match those raw edges around the neck, matching those shoulder seams. And we're going to match uh, all the way around to the front. Now, um, if you're going to do be doing, do be do be do, if you're going to be doing a uh, uh, binding around the neckline, you don't have to sew this step around the neckline. You can just sew those side seams, the front seams, I'm sorry, the part that's gonna go right here, and you can leave that neck raw because when you, you, you can go ahead and attach the neck binding then, and then um, sew, that's how you're gonna clip them, clip them together. So you can go ahead and just instead, because you're not going to be eating your uh, quarter inch allowance, so you can leave it raw and just trim it a quarter inch around if you're adding uh, neck binding okay I am NOT doing neck binding I'm just going to go ahead and sew around the whole neck now if you're doing neck binding and you want to go ahead and sew around the neck now you can uh, but like I said you don't have to this part you can be doing with a straight stitch or I'm going to be doing it with the serger just because I love using the serger but honestly if you do it with a straight stitch that might be better for the corners here is better because you can trim around the corners and the edges and give it a really sharp look um, but I think it looks good with the serger as well so that's why I do the serger because I'm the rebel so we're gonna go ahead and sew out down the side around the neck and down the other side of the neck oh and that trim is gonna be wedged between the two sides it's right there it's wedged right there all right so as you can see I sewed it all the way around now if you're making the ruffle sleeve this is the next step if you're not making that ruffle then you can skip this step the first thing you want to do is you want to finish off the hem of that ruffle however you want to finish it um, you can do a uh, ruffled hem, you can do um, just however you want to do it. I'm just going the, uh, what do you call it, the traditional hem with a woven where I'm folding a quarter inch down and then I'm going another quarter inch down because there is a two, I mean not two, there's a half an inch allowance. So I'm folding quarter inch. And now I'm going around and folding another quarter inch and seaming. I know people ask me, uh, how do you do curved hems? Really, I just make sure that I'm pulling the fabric tight to make it go down when I'm steaming. And I honestly, half the time, don't even pin my uh, hems, especially when I'm doing a uh, woven. Because they are pretty easy. The fabric is pretty easy to manipulate and keep down. So I'm going to go ahead and just stitch that right there. So it's fold and fold, and I'm going to stitch it together and uh, top stitch it, hem it together. Uh, you can use, like I said, you can do hem it however you want to hem it. That's fine. All right. Now, once it's been hemmed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather it. I'm just kind of trimming these little edges right here because um, I had, when I folded over, they kind of came out. So what I'm going to do is now we're going to uh, gather this ruffle to the width of half of our arm size. So we're going to open this up 
and we're gonna do it to about half. If we're going over from the top, half, and then from the other side, half to like to the half right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and how I'm going to gather today is I'm just going to do a basting stitch, a long stitch along that edge, and then I'm gonna pull it and gather it in as I pull it. So that's all I'm doing. On my sewing machine, I set it for a long straight stitch and that's it. All right, so now you have it. Here's my uh, basting stitch. See, it's just a long stitch. We're gonna grab one of the threads and pull it and gather that up. Now, sometimes what I'll do, sorry, before I gather, I'll show you. I like to go ahead and find my middle, where the middle of my ruffle is first and kind of mark it. That way I know that this is gonna be at my shoulder seam and then you know one side is coming up and then the other side is going the other way. And that sometimes makes it easier when I'm ruffling, when I'm, uh, yeah, when I'm gathering. Let me think of the word. I guess it's a ruffle, ruffling. I don't know, ruffling. So I know that this is gonna be my middle piece right here and I wanna gather this to the middle. So I know I've got some more gathering to do. I'm gonna pull that and gather. Come on, there we go. Okay, middle, where's my middle? And now it is gathered. Pretty much the middle, see? And I'm gonna do, let me bring you closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's my middle piece. I made that little mark in the middle notch. I'm matching that right there. If I match the raw edges, come all the way down, you can see I finished at the middle of the seam, from here to here, the middle, right there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing from the other side. Grab that stitch, pull it, and gather the sleeve. Now, my basting stitch, this is why sometimes we do it, we don't uh, always do this method, because look at that. My basting stitch got out of hand and it came off of this side. So I'm gonna have to baste it again and make sure that it doesn't come all the way out and leave me with a straight piece. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and go on my machine and gather it or I can just by hand gather it since it's just a little bit and we're not gonna tell anyone. So we're gonna go ahead and pin it right here at the middle where I made that mark, right sides together and we're pinning it to the outer. So make sure the liner is out of the way we're just gonna pin it right sides together to that outer. And what I'm going to do is I am going to leave it like so. I'll show you in a minute what I mean. The little bit right here, that little tail that hangs out, I'm gonna let it hang out. So that way when I sew it together, that little tail gets eaten and I'll have a nice finished edge. It won't be like raw edge right there. I'm gonna pin this way, gather, pin. Hopefully you didn't have this happen to you where it came apart because then I'm now I'm just gathering it really tight with my myself. Just it's OK. I got it. And then I'm going to pin it. I hope you can see what I'm doing and my fingers are not in the way. OK, now what I'm going to do is whoop. That was ball trying to get in the scene. What I'm going to do now is I'm Stop, Bo. He's playing. He's playing with y'all. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and baste it all the way around so that it is uh, right here, so it is stuck. So when I go to sew them both together, it won't move. So I'm gonna do the same thing for my other sleeve and I'm gonna baste them together. Just baste to the outer layer, right sides together. So I got to thinking and I figure some of you don't know who Bo is. So I figure I'd go ahead and introduce him. Hi, this is Bo. This is my little puppy doggy. And um, he's the one that sometimes tries to get in the video and knock off the camera. So 
So I just figured I'd introduce him so you know um, that this is the little one. This is the little guy that tries to come in and take over. So now you can be happy when you see the camera shake, you know, it's just Bo trying to say hello. So say hi, Bo. <laughs> All right, so now that you met Bo, we can move on. <laughs> so I've got my ruffle attached, as you can see. It's just basted on to that right side of my fabric. Now I'm gonna grab my uh, liner and I'm going to put it right over that ruffle. So like what I wanna do is maybe fold that ruffle just a little bit so that my other side, my liner can go right on top of my outer. So I'm sandwiching that ruffle right there in between the two i'm just making like a ruffle sandwich and i'm going to pin around the whole arm and make sure that ruffle is in there now as you can see like i showed you earlier when i was attaching basting the ruffle on i left a little tail of the ruffle out at the end because I want to catch it in there when I sew them together. So there's a little bit of a tail hanging out of the ruffle. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that closed. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Same thing. Grabbing that ruffle, wrinkling it up a little bit, putting that liner right on top matching those seams and matching all the way down the sleeve and those raw edges together <clears throat> all the way down. Right there with my little edges hanging out. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew that together. All right, so now our ruffle is encased in there. We're gonna go ahead and open it by pulling the ruffle out, kind of pulling that out through there, that whole backside is coming through. Come on. This is my back. Sometimes it's easier if you kind of roll this up just a tiny bit so that when it comes through, it's kind of rolled because it's got to come through this little area. Pull the ruffle out and pull your whole area through. Be careful not to rip it, so be gentle when you're pulling it. Almost there. And with the smallest sizes, you'll have like less room, but you'll have more room with the bigger sizes. Okay, there is one side. How pretty is that? And then let's continue to pull this side. Again, let me open it up, kind of roll it together so that it can come out easily. Again, do it nicely and gently. Don't pull too tight because if you pull too hard, you might rip your stitches. We don't want to do that. No, 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 no. Here they come up. There it is. Now you can use um, any kind of tool to poke the back straight. I have. Let me show you what I have. And I have one of these little guys. And we're gonna go ahead and pull those corners out. Ah, oh, there's Bo again, laying down and trying to say hi to you. And then um, the other side as well. Okay, all these little corners. This is my front where my little ruffle area is. Well, it's not really a ruffle, it's a uh, embellishment right here. Pull it out. Okay, there it is. How cute is that? And then we're gonna go ahead and this is, we can go ahead and steam that front side. Okay, and you can also go ahead and pull off those basting stitches off on the shoulders. 
for bursting stitches. There we go. And now we're gonna go ahead and open up our sides. Here's our side. We're gonna lay our front, our sides together to sew it, to sew those together. So right sides together, you see? So I got my front and my back and we're placing them together, right sides together, liner to liner, outer to outer, there's my pins. And we're gonna sew them together to create those sides. So I'm gonna pin. And pin. And we're gonna sew those sides together. All right, so now that we've sewn those sides together, we wanna go ahead and steam everything. Giving it everything a good steam is always really good idea. A really good idea. Because it helps everything lay nice and smooth and fit together nicely. Um, you can, if you haven't pulled all basting stitches out, pull all those stitches out. Get everything all nice and clean. And together. How cute is this going to be? I am already loving it. So now you're going to go ahead and grab your pattern piece, your front pattern piece. And you're gonna mark where they have the buttonhole areas. What I'll do is I'll open up, like slice open those places and mark my buttons. And then if you're going to do buttons, go ahead and do your, uh, your button uh, holes already. If you're not doing buttonholes, if you're doing snaps, you can wait and do your snaps at the end. Uh, might be a, a good time to do those. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and do those. So I honestly cannot decide if I want to do the white or the brown. They both look super cute. I think the white is more kid-like, the brown is more grown up, but I like both of them, so I can't decide. But good for me, both of them are the same size, so I can decide that at the end, attach a couple buttons, and if it works out, and then I'll uh, just leave them. If not, I can exchange them. So there's no issue with the fact that the, the width, what width they are. So what I'm going to do is, what I did first is I grabbed my pattern piece, I put it right next to it, and I marked where my buttonholes are supposed to be at okay now i'm using this red mar uh red pen probably not the best thing to use but you can barely see it on my fabric anyway so it's no big deal now my uh button is a half an inch wide so i want to make it a little bit i want that uh buttonhole to be a little bit wider but i also don't want it to be huge so I'm going to go for, I'm thinking a three quarter inch um, or something like that, I think would work. So I'm gonna do like, yeah, it's like a little bit over a half an inch. So I'm gonna do that on, I'm gonna mark my buttonhole where I wanna start and then where I want to end. Let's kind of mark that right there. See my button will fit right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my sewing machine. See how I marked it right there. Okay. I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew my buttonhole. So my machine actually has a setting for buttonholes. So um, that's what I'm doing. But if you don't have a setting for buttonholes, um, all you have to do is you start at the end. You do a zigzag, zigzag, a really tight zigzag stitch. Then get to where front is, zigzag over that, and then go back and do a zigzag stitch, really tight zigzag stitch right next to it, really close together to create that, um, to create the uh, buttonhole. But I'm going to show you how mine does it. So we're going to start at now my foot is broken and I had, I went to go get a new one a while, a little while ago and I could not find one. So I'm just using a broken foot. Usually a uh, uh, buttonhole foot has got this long little tail right here that will guide you so you can keep your, uh, your um, buttonhole straight. So I'm gonna start right here. This is the end of my buttonhole and I'm gonna put it right at the end of my buttonhole. Sorry, I, that was not the end of my buttonhole. Sometimes it's easier to just guide it with your, there we go. All right, and then it goes, it's gonna go backwards and do my zigzag. 
very close zigzag is doing. I'm using the guide of the foot to make sure that I'm staying straight. And I am watching where I place that line to show me where to stop. Okay, so I got to the red line that I made. And I put the turn button, the return, and it brings me right back doing that zigzag stitch again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way to the end. And then I push that button again. I went over a little bit. And then it closes that zigzag. And my buttonhole is created. There we go. All right, once your buttonholes are all done, we're gonna overlap your bodice by a qu three quarters of an inch, 75. We're gonna overlap. And then we're going to grab and baste those together right here at the waist. Couldn't find my tomato. We're gonna baste them together right here. Again, it's just a baste together uh, three quarters of an inch okay now I'm not measuring from that pretty little thing I'm just measuring from the edge three quarters of an inch I'm gonna baste it and then we're gonna go move on to do our bottoms oh so cute all right so we're gonna work on our shorts okay so I've grabbed my uh, front piece of my short and I'm gonna grab my other front piece and put it right sides together and we're gonna sew right here the curve of the uh, of the uh, shorts together. So we're gonna sew that curve together, right sides together. All right. So now once that is sewn together, if you are doing pockets, this is the next step. You're gonna open it up where that side, that slanted side is. We're gonna grab your pocket liner. The pocket liner is the one that's also got that slanted slanted side and we're going to put it right sides together right on top and we're going to sew it together and we're going to do that for both pockets both sides just like so this one's already sewn on okay then we're going to open it up and fold it towards the back once it's sewn on and we're going to go ahead and top stitch that front side of your pocket so let me go ahead and sew this one on as well and top stitch them. All right, it is top stitched on. So once it's top stitched on, we're gonna pull it open again. No, no, I'm sorry. Flip it up so you can see it. There it is, the shape of the pocket and the rounded edge. We're gonna match that rounded edge of that pocket with the rounded edge of the pocket outer together, right sides together. And we're gonna sew around that curved edge show you here is my curve we're gonna sew around that curved edge i'm just gonna pin it right here and i'm gonna go ahead and sew Shoop. all right so now i whoop, i went ahead and top stitched my pockets down and um if i didn't mention it before you're supposed to do the same thing to the back pants so that raw edge together um, so that it's one piece. So now that it's sewn together, we're gonna put it right on top, right sides together, the body, the uh, bottoms, the front and the back, right here at that raw edge on the side, and we're going to pin it. And if you are like me and you ended up with the pocket kind of facing out a little bit, don't worry about it. Just make sure that it's caught there all the way. And so that's one side, and then we're gonna sew the other side as well, both sides. Make sure that pocket's tucked in. Don't let the pocket come out and be all, and get cut on there when you're sewing it together. I'll turn it on and show you what I mean. The pocket needs to stay down. If it comes up this way and gets caught, that would not be good. So we're gonna go ahead and sew those sides together of your shorts all right so now once our shorts are together i'm gonna turn actually we're gonna leave them like this because what we're going to do is we're going to attach them to our bodice okay so you see where our sides are we're gonna fold it touch our sides together 
and go to the back and I like to like create a little notch but if you just want to mark it with a pin that will be just fine where the front back is and where the front is now I'm just gonna mark oh no I can right here at the front mark it mark I'm gonna put a pin there too because I can't just want to make sure okay so now that I've got the marks I'm going to fit it into my pants making sure the right side is the front side is to the front side the back side is to the back side we don't want to put them on backwards and we're touching right sides together so the right side of my shorts is touching the right side of my bodice and now I'm matching front to front seam side seams together Whoop. back to where I marked my back together and then another side seam together right sides together and now I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around it right sides together all right so now we've attached our bottoms to our bodice turn it right side out already and we're gonna put them to the side we're gonna work on the waistband we're gonna grab the both pieces put them right sides together and we're going to sew at the raw edges to create one continual loop really quickly Now we're gonna go ahead and hem both ends, the top and the bottom, we're gonna hem it. Uh, you know, what's your favorite way of hemming? Um, I don't know, you can do uh, what I, you can just do quarter inch and quarter inch again, like we did on the, on the sleeve. What I'm gonna do with this one, because you won't see, see on the sleeve, you could, you're gonna see the back of it on the ruffle, so you'll see the back of it. But on, the, on this, you won't, because it's gonna get attached to the actual bodice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew the whole raw edge, I'm gonna finish it up with the serger, and then I'm gonna fold it down over that seam and sew it together and, and top stitch it. So that's what I'm gonna do. To let me know what you're going to do. Let's go ahead and do that. And you do you, your way, or you know if you're gonna do the same, um, fold and fold or whatever, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it how I was gonna do it. All right, so I serge that raw edge all the way around. Then now I'm folding that raw edge in and I'm just top stitching all the way around. And that's how I'm doing my hemming. I think it's a lot easier and faster than seaming and then seaming again. How are you doing it? Get to the end and cut and they are hemmed. Whoops, that's where I cut the first one. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to gather this long piece, the width of our bodice. So I'm gonna do the same thing. You're gonna gather from the top and the bottom. So I'm just doing a basting stitch like I did earlier, leave a tail for pulling, and we're gonna go all the way around. And I'm gonna do that on the top and on the bottom because I wanna gather the top and the bottom. We're gonna gather it all, all the width of the bodice. I'm just going all the way around to doing this basting stitch because that's how I usually do my gathering. And like you see, I kind of went past it a little bit, leave a tail and cut. And now I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Now what I sometimes do before I get to, you know, gathering is I go ahead and mark my, I already have my halves because that's where I sewed it together. And I'm gonna mark my sides, my quarters. And this time, since we're gathering the whole thing, both top and bottom, I can just go ahead and put a pin right here. I'm not going to notch it because obviously you already hemmed, you don't wanna notch that. So we're, I'm just marking it with a pin right here at the two sides. And why I do that is because when I gather, then I'll know from here to here is this is half and from here to here is the other half. So I think it helps me gather. And you can do is you can go ahead and, and fit it in here already and start gathering. But I'm just gonna gather like half of it going this way first.
all the way to that middle seam. Okay. And I know that that has to be half the uh, bodice, that one half. And I'm gonna gather that bottom piece too. So it evens out, so it's matching to the top. And actually you can pull, I should have done this, pull both of them at the same time so that they're being gathered at the same time instead of doing one at a time. Come on. Probably would have been easier to do it that way, huh? Hence hindsight. And there is my half. So you know right here is my piece, right here is my other piece. Oh, I gotta gather a little bit more because it's supposed to be half, okay? So I'm gonna keep gathering. I'm gonna bring it closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna be gathering right here and gather it the, all the way to see half right here and half right here. That's gonna be that width right there. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side for the back. So I'm pulling these together and gathering. I'm gonna pull this one this way. So I went one way and now I'm going the other. Ooh, I should have grabbed both at the same time again. And gather, and then you're gonna gather it so it's all the way around. Let me continue to do that and then we'll move on to our next step. All right, so once you are done gathering, what I like to do is I like to grab um, both sides of my gathering stitches and kind of tie them together so that way they don't come off once I'm trying to sew them together so my ruffles don't uh, come apart. So I just do it like a little tie, you know, the beginning and the end of my uh, basting stitch that I gathered with. And now my gathers are done. I'm gonna fit it right over my bodice. You know, all these little strings are everywhere. I'm gonna match up those uh, lines so here's my back line. I'm gonna match that to the back of my rumper and pin it there. Going in right here and pin it right there. And then I'm gonna go that side where I have that pin on the side where I mark my sides. I'm gonna put that pin that side right there. And then I'm gonna do the same for the front right here where that seam is. That's my front and pin. And then I'm going to do the same for that other side and pin. Now, as I already pinned it on, I'm going to go ahead and right at the edge, you can do it right over that already seam right there. You're gonna go ahead and uh, sew this band onto your, uh, onto your rumper, okay? And you're gonna sew at the top and you're gonna sew at the bottom, so it's gonna go at the top sewn together, at the bottom sewn together. I'm gonna sew it right over, right below the um, my hemline, and then sew it look like a double needle top stitch type of thing. Now, for the top, go all the way around. For the bottom, we're gonna leave an inch gap, not sewn together, because that's where we're gonna fit our elastic, to fit our elastic into the band. So we're gonna go ahead and sew the top, and then sew the bottom, leaving a gap so you can fit your elastic. And we're done so to sew this one on I took my arm off so it's just the little piece and fed it right in there and then I'm going to use my foot as a guide and right where that foot edge is I'm gonna place that right on top of where my uh, uh, when I sewed the hem so that way it kind of fits the same it's straight and what I usually like to do is I go slowly and I push those ruffles down sometimes I grab a needle and I push them down with my needle kind of like so pushing them down as they're going under the, the sewing machine so you still have that nice little ruffle effect right there but they're kind of tacked down and we're going all the way around like I said for the top you're going all the way around now for the bottom you are going uh, to leave that gap now also remember as you're going around look at all these threads right here you can go ahead and clip those off as you're going around you want that middle of the ruffle to hit the middle to hit your seam that waist seam so we're going all the way around making sure that ruffle is staying up 
and going around. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up going all the way around and do that top one as well, I mean the bottom one as well, and then we'll come back to put the elastic on and move on. All right, so our band is sewn on. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our elastic, and I should have already grabbed one of these, but I didn't. You grab a all right our band is on so now we're gonna go ahead and grab our elastic and you can use a handy dandy clothespin and pin your elastic at one end and fade it feed it through that gap you left for your rumper so i'm going to go all the way around and feed that elastic through my band All right, once I've fed my elastic all the way through my band and pull it out, I'm gonna overlap the elastic, overlap it and sew it together right there. And then I'm gonna let it go in and top stitch that area that we left open, top stitch it close. All right, so it's sewn closed and we're almost done. Look at how cute this is looking, adorable. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn it inside out. And you can pull all these stitches already off that are here, your the basting stitches. Obviously not the uh, when you sew it on, but just those basting stitches off. And I'm gonna grab here the bottom of the legs, put them right sides together, and I'm gonna sew the crotch area right there, sew that closed. And then we're gonna attach our bands and we'll be done. All right, we're gonna turn our pants right side out. As you can see now, you have actual shorts. Oh, I'm so excited. This is gonna be super, super cute. We're gonna grab our band and we're gonna work on our leg bands. And the first thing I actually like to do is to go ahead and create a crease because that way when I sew it on the fold, then I will already have that nice crease there to help me wrap it around. I'm gonna do the same for both. That way we're gonna go ahead and get them both done at the same time. And actually, I, I, I'm not doing the neck binding, but I'll tell you, if you are doing the neck binding, you'll have the binding, it'll look kind of like this, and you will actually fold it in and to itself again, like so, to create a binding, and then in again to create a binding. Okay, and then you will actually be attaching the binding first, the raw edges together to the end, and then overlapping it and turning it in to create that binding. Now at the end first, you're gonna sew it together. That way it, it you know, like encases it in there and then go all the way around and sew it together. But I'm not creating that binding, so I'm just doing the leg. So it's already folded together. I'm gonna fold them right sides together at that uh, short edge. I'm gonna do it for both real quick. There was one. I'm gonna do it for the other one. That way I can show you. What are you, are you sewing with me right now? Are you almost done? Are you excited we're almost done? How cute is this going to be? We're gonna grab it and I'm going to mark my half right here. And I'm just gonna do a little notchity notch. Same for this one. A little notch right here on the edge. So I'm marking my half. And I am gonna grab my leg and I'm gonna mark, see right here, I'm gonna, I want that seam on the inside. So I'm gonna put that seam, I'm gonna fit that cuff around it, right sides together, matching at the raw edges up here. Ooh, my pins. Okay, and then that other corner as well where I marked right here, that raw edge meeting right here at that seam. So now my seams are together and I'm gonna sew all the way around going around that band. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other leg as well. 
All right, now to sew around that leg right there, you can actually remove that arm. You know, I never actually ever really remove it and somebody asked me why I never do it. And I guess I just never really thought about doing it. I don't know why, but uh, it does make it so much easier if you do remove it. You don't have to. If you're like me, you probably don't, but that's okay. And we're gonna go all the way around those right edge, right sides together, raw edge, me median right there, and going all the way around the whole leg. Sewing it together, making sure that you don't catch your other fabric. Thank you to whoever asked me that in one of the comments because I never usually take my arm off and I don't know why. There's no real reason why I never do. I just don't. Then you flip it and it's done. You can go back and top stitch that seam, fold that seam towards the inside and top stitch around the edge and we're done. All right. My legs have been top stitched. I'm just gonna trim those little pieces of fabric, of thread. Now all I have to do to finish my rumper is to go ahead and where I created those buttonholes, we're gonna open the buttonholes up. We'll put them against, each, against the back, mark it, and sew on those buttons. And I usually do that by hand, so I'll just go ahead and do that when we're done. But that is it, our rumper is finished. How cute is this little rumper with these little pockets and um, this little detail right here. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything that I did. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Send me any questions, comment, like, share, and then come visit us on our Facebook or Instagram page so you can share your makes. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I am going to go try to decide if I want to go with whoop, the brown button or the white button. What do you all think? Leave your comments below. I think I'm going to go with the white because it highlights it more. It looks brighter. Anyway, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all next time.